Okay, it looks like we're off. So at the bottom of the screen, you can see the number of participants increasing. Wow. So what we'll do is we, we'll just wait for a few minutes while everyone gets, um, gets themselves settled. Okay. Right, okay, so um, good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to this Cycle Festival uh, talk this evening. Uh, we're about halfway through the festival, and um, this, this evening we've got a real treat, which is to welcome, <coughs> welcome Richard Fairhurst to, to the festival. Um, I believe it's his first time talking at the festival, and he's come to introduce his website. So um, I, I'm just gonna do a little bit of housekeeping first and then we'll get straight into the kind of the content and um, so the first thing is just to mention that as I'm sure you're all aware by now uh, this festival is run as a not-for-profit event um, and so most of the organizers and the speakers are volunteers there is a small cost associated with this event and we encourage people to make a, a five pound donation for each talk that they see or if you're watching a lot of talks 20 pounds for the lot um, so what I'll do is I'm going to put the Q&A link up. I'm going to put the, the donation link in the chat right now. But you can also find it on the website. And um, we do encourage you to do that if, if at all we can. OK, this talk is scheduled for about an hour. Um, there'll be probably 20, 25 minutes or certainly ample time to answer questions at the end. Ask your own questions to, to Richard. Um, the way to ask Richard questions is to not do it on the chat screen because um, they'll get lost in the in the general chit chat that's going on throughout the whole talk. If you click the Q&A button at the bottom and make sure um, that it's, the, the, it's directed to the panellists, then that question will come directly through to Richard and myself and we'll, we'll try to cover as many of them as possible at the end. This session is being recorded. And so if there's bits that you miss or bits that you want to see again or share with your friends, you can do so by following the link on the Cycle Touring website. And um, they'll also be posted on the Cycle Touring Festival YouTube channel. OK, so I think that's um, all the housekeeping stuff. So let me just take a bit of time to introduce Richard. So um, this evening we're in the company of a, a, an expert on cycle route planning. Richard has an interest in ensuring that all cyclists in the UK and, and further afield have all the route finding information that they need in order to make their trips a success. Um, and in order to do that, Richard set up this website called Cycle.Travel. And it's grown from a pet project into quite an extensive database of both paved and unpaved routes. It includes stage by stage guides, downloadable PDFs, GPX files, and in short, it's become an essential utility for anyone with a passion for exploring by bike. So, while not drawing maps or building websites, Richard likes to tour mid Wales. Um, and in his bio, he says he, he often looks for a particular type of scrumpy, for which I'm going to need help with the pronunciation of actually, Richard. Can you? Quincy Fried. So, um, yep. back in his breath. Um, and in his free time, he volunteers for Sustrans and is also an NCN ranger. So, um, welcome, Richard. We're looking forward Thank to you. your talk. And um, I will reappear at the again at the end to help with all the questions and answers. So over to you. Excellent, thank you very much. Well, hello everyone. It's lovely to, uh, lovely to be here and lovely to see in the chat the um, rather amazing number of locations that everyone is coming from. So I think we've just had Hollywood pop up, which is quite good. Um, today I'm going to be talking about Cycle Travel, which is my website for route planning. Um, it's been going for about six, seven years now, I think. Uh, it's an online map and route planner and what I'm going to be doing today is saying how it works, what it does, um, showing you a bit of a sort of guided tour around the site, uh, an explanation of how to do various things and some of the things that even if you've used the site before you might not necessarily uh, have tried out yet. Um, and I'm going to be illustrating it by planning a trip and a trip that I've already taken so uh, I can hopefully give an fairly honest view as to whether the route that Cycle Travel planned for me was any good. Uh, this was a route that I uh, rode last September. It was uh, across Wales, uh, not quite from south to north, it was from Brecon, so in the south, south coast, 
uh, up to Sunnyville on the uh, north coast. And those of you who've cycled in that part of the world will know that any any ride through that sort of mid Wales means wonderful scenery. It also means quite a lot of hills. So uh, I will share some of the experiences of uh, struggling up the hills. But yes, so cycle travel. Uh, I will be sharing my screen for most of this because I think that's probably the best way to explain what the website is rather than going through a bunch of slides. So if I just go to that now. Okay. So you should hopefully now see um, on, on your screens cycle travel. Um, the URL is exactly what it says on the tin, cycle.travel, not cycletravel.com, cycletravel.org, just cycle.travel. Um, and it's summed up by the little slogan you can see there, life's too short to ride busy roads. Um, this is very much a touring and leisure focused route planner. Uh, it's not something that's intended for people describing themselves as athletes. You have Strava for that. It's not particularly for cycle clubs, although some do use it. It's not particularly for commuting, although it will find you a nice route across the town if you like, but it is mostly about leisure cycling and touring. And so, very simplest thing, what can we do? Well, where should we go? This is where I live in the Cotswolds. Where do I want to go? Let's say I want to go to the beautiful Cathedral City of Worcester. And there we go. It will find me a route. Um, the idea is that is a pleasant route on quiet lanes. You'll see from that, if you know the area, that it follows the National Cycle Network for some of it. And that's the little red dots along here, um, but not religiously. Uh, it aims to find you something where you can have a nice relaxed ride, um, where you're not going to encounter horrendous traffic at any point. You're not going to encounter horrendous mud at any point, which is always one of the challenges when planning a route. Um, and hopefully that the scenery will be quite good as well. So. As you can see, it's a website. It's not an app as yet. I am working on an app at the moment, um, but I haven't, haven't quite finished it yet. Um, it's, however, you can use it both on desktop or on your phone. If you use it on the phone, then it's slightly adapted for the smaller screen. So you'll see a different thing uh, from what you see here. I'm going to be using the desktop version tonight. Um, and question you might want to be un uh, answered. It is completely free. Um, you don't have to pay for premium membership or to unlock regions or any of the sort of stuff you might expect. Um, it's free. You can become a supporter if you like and help me with some of the costs of running the website, but you don't have to be. It's all up there and um, free to use. So how what where first of all, where does it cover? So I've started here in Britain, but if we zoom out a bit, you can see covers Western Europe, about most of Europe now, covers North America, and if we go way off past all the white regions elsewhere, we have Australia and New Zealand. So should you want to, you could plan a route up the South Island of New Zealand, and there we go, it will hopefully find you somewhere beautiful to go. Um, it, as I say, it very much tries to use roads that have not much traffic on them. Uh, there's basically two schools of thought in um, planning a route planner. Uh, some route planners try to find roads with not many cars on, some trying to find roads with lots of cyclists. Uh, I'm very much of the school of thought that not many cars is what makes uh, a pleasant touring route. Uh, if I go for a ride in Mid Wales or Cotswolds or wherever, I have beautifully quiet roads, but I don't see any of the cyclists today. I don't feel short change. It's the quiet roads that are what I love. It likes traffic free paths as well, but it tries to assess them for surface quality. So tarmac traffic free paths, great. Uh, firm gravel, um, that sort of thing. Yeah, uh, very happy with that. Um, Quagmire bridleways, it will try and uh, steer clear of where possible. And it likes good scenery as well. So um, it actually does a fair amount of quite clever analysis of the scenery, both land cover. So, you know, uh, are we in a wooded area? Uh, are we near the seaside, that sort of thing, um, but also landforms. So it um, is a very rough rule of thumb. If you had a completely flat cycle route through a valley and a completely uh, flat cycle route through Fenland, then the one through the valley would be uh, the more pleasant one to ride along with. Apologies to anyone who might be uh, coming in from Cambridgeshire today. Uh, I, I remember I, I used to ride across Cambridgeshire quite a lot um, and 
I remember thinking, how hard can it be? Because it's all beautifully flat. This is going to be one of the easiest rides I've ever done. Um, yeah, it was beautifully flat, but it was also the headwind from hell. So um, maybe not quite so good. And cycle travel sadly cannot plan a route um, uh, with uh, tomorrow's headwinds in mind, but wouldn't that be a lovely thing to be able to do? So what else can it do? It's fast and partly that's, uh, that's a good thing in itself. So if I say I want to route from Land's End to John O'Groats, then you will see it's got it in probably about a second. But what that also gives you um, is it means you can have via points and you can have as many as you like and have up to about 200, I think. And when you put those via points on, you can drag the route around. And because you can drag the route around in real time, that means that it's quite easy to fine tune your routes. Say, yep, I've just decided I want to go um, through Ipswich on the way from Land's End to John Groats, because why not? And then we can drag it towards Manchester and we're getting a nice sort of zigzag shape route. But, you know, um, that means that you can customize the route really, really easily just by dragging it where you want to go. Very much like you might be used to with Google Maps if you're uh, planning a, uh, a car journey. One of the other things you'll notice is that the mapping you see here is all custom done. It uses, as with pretty much every other site, it uses OpenStreetMap as the base information. OpenStreetMap, if you don't know, is the volunteer created map of the world. It's very much like Wikipedia. Uh, it's people going out and um, adding their local knowledge to the map, which means that in theory, um, it should be the best local information that any map can have. Nice thing about OpenStreetMap is that a lot of the surveyors, a lot of the enthusiasts for it, um, among whom I count myself, uh, are cyclists. So it's always had really good coverage of cycle routes. So I take the OpenStreetMap data and put a particular spin on it, you might say. So you can see here that I've chosen to highlight National Cycle Network routes. Uh, they're the red dotted lines. You can see a few other routes, some of which are the uh, lovely and uh, little known National Byway, some of those blue dots there. Um, but one of the other things that I've chosen to do here is that you'll see in contrast to quite a lot of other online maps, the minor roads are visible when you're zoomed out. You can see along here uh, a lot of the thinner gray lines. And that's because this sort of cycle route planning is the minor roads that you want to look out for. So I thought it was important to have those visible as soon as possible. And as I mentioned in the program, it's um, it's an independent route planning site, uh, which means, for want of a better word, it's basically just me. Uh, if you look at some of the other ones and some of the big businesses that are into cycle route planning these days, uh, Strava has, I think, $150 million worth of funding. I would quite like $150 million worth of funding. I wouldn't say no to $150, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, we're not quite on the same scale there. Um, Kamut, who have been very active over the past few years, have, I think, staff of 75 and some German government German government funding in the early days. Ride with GPS, which is a terrific site, has staff of about 25 people. So uh, Cycle Travel has me. Uh, I would like to, at this point, turn around and introduce you to the rest of the team, but the rest of the team is uh, mostly just me uh, and uh, occasionally a um, insistent five-year-old asking when I'm going to come and play with him and uh, stop working on my computer. So yeah, that, that's kind of what I mean by independent. But I hope, you know, with limited resources, um, nonetheless, I have a lot of dedication to this. And, you know, it's, it's something I love doing. So I hope that some of the passion for it um, comes through. So let's have a look at planning a couple of routes. I'm going to start in Chalbury, which is where I live. And let's have a go at planning, say, tried earlier, a route to Worcester. Now, if we zoom in and see some of the route choices it's made for us. As you can see, it's very much focused on the smaller roads here. Uh, we've started uh, at a place that has an NCN route, but it's not completely religiously following the NCN. Some of the more uh, wild wiggles of the National Cycle Network, it has cut off the corner where it's happy that the route it's choosing is still going to be quiet and safe. Um, you can see here, if we zoom into Adelstrop, um, it's actually gone off the NCN just for a short way and that's because that path, really lovely path but actually quite muddy, uh, so it's uh, saying that from a touring point of view it might be easier to go around. Cutting off a few more wiggles here but it's still effectively taking you on quiet roads all the way through lovely market town of Pershaw and we get into Worcester and as we zoom in we can see, I, let's end up somewhere near the cathedral. 
And there we go. So looking over to the left, that's 48 miles. So that sounds like a, about a, a day's ride. Uh, and it's found a nice road on quiet roads and um, cycle paths. Now let's try something a bit more challenging and let's go for Land's End to John Groats. Now this I always feel is the sort of acid test for a route planning programme really. Um, I'm always very aware that people are using this to plan their tours, to plan their holidays. And I do not want to be responsible for someone having a lousy holiday. So what I try to do is make sure that cycle travel is not gonna give you any nasty surprises. It's never gonna be 100% foolproof, nothing is. Uh, but I want it to, within the confines uh, possible, give you a good holiday on quiet roads, not too many evil hills and make it a pleasant route. Now. If you ask Google Maps for a route from Lands and Chichon Groats, then in the first 50 miles, it will send you on the A30 for several sections. And you know, there are cyclists for whom that's their sort of riding and you know, good luck to you if that's what you like. But I'm gonna say it's not my sort of riding and I don't think I could sleep at night if I was uh, putting out a route planner that suggested people go on the A30 with the trucks going um, a couple of feet to the right. So you'll see from the off, it's sending you on all these little quiet roads. Let's drag that right to the start. Through Penzance and Marazine, you can see it's chosen the coastal route there, which if you've not been there recently, the coastal route has just been recently um, resurfaced. Absolutely beautiful now, really, really nicely done. And then we're going over here. It's actually taking a little, you can see there's a bit here highlighted in green. Uh, it highlights the off-road bits in green. Um, that's a bit of the Cornish coast to coast route, which is the shortest coast to coast route there is. I think it's about 50 miles long. Uh, very nice little cycle path along an old mineral railway. Then we're on quiet roads going up and you're getting the gist of it now. We're on the, um, I think that's the Grand Western. No, that's not Grand Western yet. That's the, um, uh, the Camel Trail there. Old railway again, and then we're breaking out on a bit of NCN, quiet roads there on the Devon coast to coast for a while into Oakhampton. And I'm not going to take you through the entire route, but I think you can see that you can see the mix of routes that it's choosing. So it's a bit towpathy, a bit rail trail, mostly country lanes. Um, you can see that what, what it's doing is trying to keep you uh, off, uh, away from traffic where possible. And it doesn't mind going through cities, so we'll see it's actually skirting the outskirts of Bristol there and going through Birmingham because there's some lovely upgraded towpaths there these days. Um, but yeah, mostly, mostly we're talking about a rural ride. Now, you might be looking at this and thinking, well, that's fine, but I've got a road bike. So what we can also do is we can switch to a paved only route. So we'll say, let's do that again, lands and with an apostrophe spell it properly, Richard. And John Groats. And you'll see it's found a route now uh, with no green highlighted sections on there at all. That's all entirely either on road or on paved cycle paths. And actually, interestingly, it's taken a slightly different route this time. Rather than going through Birmingham, it's going up through the marches. Um, you will see one little foible, uh, which is why it always pays to uh, review your route, is that it has chosen an absolutely stunning route uh, through Mid Wales, and the absolutely stunning route in question uh, goes over the Gospel Pass, which I love to bits, but which is also the highest pass in Wales. Uh, so this is always a good reason to review your route and see where it's taking you. Um, I, I found this one quite interesting. Uh, a, about a year or so ago, uh, I did a load of work on cycle travel to make it um, more aware of the scenery it's going through, more aware, more aware of the landforms, so that it got these lovely sort of valley roads and these ones with great views out over um, farmland for miles. And that's all great. And the first thing I noticed is that it instantly started liking the Gospel Pass because it is a ridiculously scenic route, but yeah, it is also quite hilly. So, okay, if we think that's enough of a challenge, uh, one more thing we can try it out on. And if that was the acid test, then this one really is the tough one. And let's ask it for a route across the States. Let's go from San Francisco to New York City. And there we go. It's um, same sort of speed. So it's found the route in the second or two. Uh, we're talking 3,459 miles. 
it will roughly be the same sort of route. It will be on quiet roads where there are quiet roads, uh, this being uh, large sections across the Midwest where there are no paved roads at all for vast uh, swathes of the country. That's harder, but it will still try and find that sort of route. Um, it is I'm reasonably confident this is a route that you could ride and enjoy. Uh, again, I don't think that's necessarily the case for everything you might try. I certainly wouldn't try um, riding a Google Maps route from New York to San Francisco. Uh, and that's partly because the challenges for routing in America are particularly difficult, but I'll talk a bit about that later. I think what you're seeing uh, is the sort of route like planning and the fact that it can plan a route quickly and hopefully effectively. As I say, you can put via points in. Um, I could drag this down to Texas, should I really want to. Um, and you can have up to about 200 of these. So if you're really, really keen on exactly where your route is going to go, then you can force it to go that way. Okay, let's have a, a bit of a more of a deep dive now into some of the ways that you can get more ideas for where to go. So you'll see it's given me its first choice route. But what if we don't like that one so much? What if we want to try something different? Well, you see there's a button over there that says find alternative and it's found a different one. And funnily enough, it's actually come out as just two miles longer, which is quite impressive over that distance. Uh, but there we go. That is a different route. We're going through um, South Dakota and Nebraska, uh, fairly flat for miles on end there. I uh, hope you like cornfields, but again, you know, that's, um, same same sort of route, just a slightly different version. Um, so you can do that with most routes. It won't always find an alternative, um, particularly for short routes. It sometimes struggles uh, because it tries to find an alternative which isn't too different um, in terms of mileage. And sometimes if you've got a five mile route, then the alternative would be a 15 mile route. It doesn't really like suggesting that, but that it can do. Let's go back home because I'm not so good on uh, Nebraska. What you can also get it to do sometimes um, is find a round trip. So let's say we want to go to, from Charlbury to Banbury. That's how we're going out. And we can ask it for a round trip. And it's found a slightly different way back actually. Um, so you can see on the way there, um, it's following NCN Route 5, goes up there and then cuts past the windmill into Banbury uh, through Bodicut. On the way back, it's going on the brand new cycle path out of Banbury to Bloxham, follows Route 5 again for a bit, but then cuts across through the Chews, I think, um, down through Enston and back into Shelbury. So that's given you, without too much hassle of um, planning anything, a slightly different route uh, for a nice round trip for the afternoon. If you don't even know that, you don't even know where you want to go, um, it has a suggest a ride button. So let's say we're starting at Chalbury again, click suggest a ride, and it's found three possible circular routes that it thinks we might enjoy, all of around about 25 miles or so, uh, and all on the sort of country lanes it likes. Now we can drag that and make it a bit bigger. So there you go. If, um, if you're fitter than I am uh, and you're good at doing 80 miles a day, then you can take it up that far take it down a bit and see. Yeah, that's that's more my sort of thing. Um, and it's got a few around about 50 miles. One of them's clearly failed and got 22, but uh, you can see here's a lovely route up into the Cotswolds, um, out to Morton in Marsh on the NCN, um, down passing Stowe, Morton on the water, mind the tourists, and then along the lovely Windrush Valley, back to Burford and uh, back on one of my favorite roads there. So um, it will find you those routes, um, circular routes like that. Um, and you can click anywhere on the map and then just click um, suggest a ride like that. Last thing I'm going to show in terms of um, suggested rides is back on the front page. And what you can also get it to do, that's where we're going to start again, is let's say we want a pub ride. Think about it a bit and it looks at its database of pubs and cafes and suggests routes to a bunch of them. So here we go. Uh, let's go to do which ones, which ones do I like? Uh, cafe, now duck on the pond, let's go there. Um, so open that in the route planner and it's found us a route of 26 miles round trip, goes out to the duck on the pond in South Newington, takes us back on country lanes, um, I think, were I doing this, I would almost certainly stop there at the Falkland Arms in Great Chew uh, on the way back and then probably ride slightly unsteadily back through Enston to Chalbury. 
Okay, so that's the basics of it. Uh, let's let's do a few more uh, complex things that you, even if you've used the site, you may not have seen so much. So uh, let's do Charlie to Gloucester this time. Now, as I say, it uses OpenStreetMap data and it tries to boil that down into a good summary of what's a good route and uh, what's a good road to ride and what isn't. And essentially the way that this or any other route planner works is that it scores each individual section of route between any two junctions. It says, okay, um, let's have a look. This, this route here, for example, between these two junctions just north of Hazleton, um, it's got a bit of an incline on it, as you can see from the contour lines. So we're going to score it a bit less well because uh, you've got to climb on it. Um, it's part of a signposted cycle route, the National Byway. So that probably means someone's reviewed it to be quite a good route. Uh, so uh, we'll score it a bit higher because of that. Uh, and it's a quiet, unclassified road. So that's going to be nice to cycle along. We'll score it higher because of that. And so if you do that with every single section of route across Britain, Europe, um, North America, then eventually you get this massive database of how good any given road is to cycle. What the route planner then does, if you ask for a route from, as we've just done from Charlbury to Gloucester, is that it says, OK, um, think of all the possible routes that there might possibly be between those two places, all the possible permutations of routes, um, add up the score uh, for each possible route, for all the segments of routes that uh, we've been looking at, and choose the one which has the best score. Uh, and it does all of that slightly within um, less than a second. In actual fact, it's, it slightly cheats. Um, it sits there. Um, what once a month I sit there with a big computer and uh, tell the computer to pre-calculate everything. So it's not doing it all on the fly. And that's why it's quite so fast. And there's been a lot of interesting research in, into this in the last 20 years um, that has made route planners like cycle travel so much faster than they used to be. Um, but essentially that's, that's the core of it. That's what it does. But it doesn't always get it right. Uh, sometimes yeah, it might not know about a particular route uh, or it might think that a route is a footpath uh, and so it's not going to let you go on it when in fact it's actually illegal to cycle. So what we can do here is we can override the route planner. So we're going to add a via point there. So we've got number one there. And let's say that there's a magic path between one and two there, which it doesn't know about. So we'll add a via point there, then number two. Okay. Now what we can do, go to the first one, and we're going to change it from go anyway to number two, to go direct. And as you can see, what it's done there is drawn a straight line between the two points. So, so that's a way of telling the route planner, actually, I know better than you, I want to go this way, uh, and please force my route to go that way. You can also do the same um, with the paved control. So what we've got here is a short bit of what it's saying is an unpaved road. It might just be a really rough surface, but if we put via point there and put another one there, then we can tell it to go on a paved route between the two. And as you can see, that's forced it out of its way a bit, um, but it's now not taking that short section of unpaved route there because we've told it between those two via points, we want that to be paved only. If you've done something that you regret, there is an undo button. So. There you go, click that on the left, it undoes it. Um, and we've also got a reverse route button if you've decided that actually I want to go from Gloucester to Charlbury rather than Charlbury to Gloucester. It takes it the other way around. Okay, um, if, if you're the sort of person who likes plotting a route by clicking consecutive points, which lots of people do, you can do that. The way to make that happen is to make sure that on the left, you've got click map to add more points. That needs to be checked. And then as you tick, it will add a point at the end every time. And you will find doing that, that you can quite easily get up to the 200 via points in uh, no time at all. But yeah, if, if that's the sort of way you like to plan routes, then it will do that. And then if we've decided, actually, um, we don't want to go this far after all, we're just going to stop at North Leach for the day. Let's put a via point there. It's a slightly hidden feature here, but you'll see there's a dot, dot, dot icon in the bottom right there. And we say we're going to delete after, and it's all gone. Okay, so let's talk about, about the cartography, a bit about the map. Um, as, um, as a profession, I, I do cartography work, I'm a cartographer. Uh, and so 
drawing a cycle map is my idea of fun, basically, and I've just really enjoyed designing the map for this. Um, as you uh, as you can see, it does very much highlight minor roads and NCN routes. Uh, in places in the world where we've got something a bit more exciting than um, just national routes, you might even have international routes. And so if we go over to northern France, you can see here we've got a little Eurovelo route there, Eurovelo route five, and it's even got the Eurovelo symbol with little number five inside it. Um, regional routes, local routes, they all show up on there. You'll also see if you look closely um, that it has different ways of symbolizing rideable traffic free paths. So here we are in a town in northern France. You'll see if I zoom in here, there's a um, a red route there, sort of a, a red with a white center. That means a paved traffic free path. But then if we go a bit further afield, you'll see there's a dotted brown one there. And that's, that's a, a track or path which we think has probably got a rougher surface. Um, so probably not ideal for cycling. But sometimes you'll see one like this one here, which is dashed rather than dotted. Let's just drag it onto there. And that's more likely to be a cyclable one. That's probably going to be gravel or a firm compacted surface, something like that. This is all very much uh, dependent on the information that's in OpenStreetMap. Um, sometimes people are really good at um, putting the surfaces in. In Germany, they're really, really good at it. Um, in North America, not so much. So you do have to have a bit of a health warning with that. It's only as good as the source data, but generally it makes a decent job of it. Okay, and as I alluded to before, um, there's contours and hill shading. I have spent so many hours of my life trying to get the hill shading right, and I'm still not convinced I've got it 100% right, but it's a fun thing to work on. So you will see if we move um, back towards Vevey from here, then you can see that's Breeden Hill, and the contours and the hill shading and the sort of little uh, grayscale shading around there um, are making it clear, making it stick out in the landscape so that you know if you're going over that way, well, funnily enough, Cycleton's Trav will send you around the corner there because Breeden Hill is a beast of a hill and it's not sending you over the top. But should you want to, there's a bunch of tracks and such like, so we can go over. Okay. It's got some unusual things um, on the map and some very standard things as well. Um, obviously, it's got um, we've got bike shops. You'd expect to have bike shops on a map like this. Um, it has pubs and it has cafes. And one thing you'll note is that they actually appear at different zoom levels, depending on where you're looking. So you can see we're here we're zoomed out a bit. And in villages like Broadway or Honeybourne, then it's showing the pub icons. It's not showing them in a town like Evesham, because if we showed all the pub icons at this Zoom level, then you wouldn't be able to see the roads, the place name, anything else. So it adapts what it's showing you to the density and where you're looking. If we look at the low countries where they have uh, wonderful cycle networks, you will see that it shows you these curious things they have, um, which are cycle nodes and I think these are lovely these are little junction points where each one has um, a number so there's number 85 and then number 68 there's number 83 and the way you can navigate around those is um, you get to one of them and it says okay go this way to get to point number 85 and then uh, at that one I say go this way to go to point number 68 so all you've got to do is navigate by going through the numbers now cycle travel knows about those and so it will show you in the turn by turn directions we see on the left so you see that one there it said 83 that one there, it said 85. And you can always click on the directions here or on any particular stretch of route uh, for it to tell you more about that route. One other thing it does in its instructions, which is quite unusual, is that it puts mountain passes on there. So if we go back to our old friend, the Gospel Pass, oh, no, 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 no. then we can go over that way. And doo -doo -doo -doo. I say that, stop doing it today. Um, it will usually show you a mountain pass uh, in the instructions there. So it will tell you, uh, give you a little icon and say, yes, you are going over Alp de Wares or Mont or wherever it might be. Okay, so I just showed you just then the, um, the first sign of a little bubble popping up. Uh, and that's when you click on a piece of road, it tells you more about it. So here we go, we can see that's part of NCN Route 442, which is Cotswold Line Cycle Route. It's a minor road without a name. What you'll also see is there's a couple of other helpful things in here that help you research the route, help you find out more about where you're going and 
if this is the sort of road you might want to write on. One of them is our old friend Google Street View. And so if I click on that, it will go straight to Street View for the, um, for the route in question. So here we go, lovely bit of uh, rural Cotswold riding. Yeah, I really like this road actually. This is this is one of those roads that always seems to have more cyclists on it than um, drivers or um, or trucks or anything. It's a really nice bit. This this one down here as well from Adelstrop to Morton in Marsh. I think this is just you know put a sign on saying you're now entering cycling country. A really really lovely road. Um, what you can also do, and this is particularly useful for off road paths, is it's interfaced with a project called Geograph. Now, Geograph is like OpenStreetMap, like Wikipedia, a crowdsourced um, sort of community-driven project, which is all about taking photos of places around Britain. So this only works in Britain, but it's incredibly useful. If we find a bit of path here, click Find Photos, obviously the Google Street View car hasn't been down this road. Um, it probably wouldn't get out the other side, uh, but Geograph contributors have. So you can see that it's found a bunch of pictures there. And if we click on one of them, it will open Geograph and you can see the state of the path. And I think, to be honest, I would rather cycle up that side than um, here we go. The year 2011 has been very dry, yet the bridal way is muddy. It is it is a nice path and uh, Adelstrop is a beautiful village and worth going through, but I wouldn't recommend doing it on a road bike, certainly. So you've got those two. You can also switch between different types of map. So this is the cycle travel default cartography. Um, many of you will know um, open street map, so we can go straight to OpenStreetMap standard style there. Uh, a couple of variations on that. There's a German OpenStreetMap style, which has got uh, some more strident colors in it. Um, Cyclosm is really nice. This is a French cycle uh, specific cartography. All of these are using the same data effectively, but the different views on the data. What you can also do, um, and I have to pay for this, so this is restricted to cycle travel um, supporters, um, but you can also switch to an ordnance survey map. And so if we zoom in, if you like planning your routes on uh, OS Land Ranger cartography, which is, you know, I think some of the finest cartography in the world, then it will do that. It's still the same routing underneath, of course. It's still weighing up the roads in exactly the same way that it would otherwise. But we're doing got an ordnance survey background here. And so you can see, you know, you've got the, um, the lovely bright yellow colours for minor roads, the way that it differentiates between that sort of um, biggish minor road and a, a, a little... Uh, narrow one there. So yeah, you, you can plan with OS maps. And if you're going further afield, then we've got several others. We've got um, the French IGN maps, uh, which are very nice again in their own way. Swiss Topo, which has the um, most ornate hill shading you'll ever see. It's just worth it from cartographic point of view, even if you're not going to Switzerland, uh, and a couple of others. So yeah, that's all on there. I mentioned climbing. Uh, we have an elevation view. This this has taken years off my life, this really has. So let's just random view uh, through here. If we click that, then we get a view and you can see, okay, here's, here's the hills, we click on that one and that zooms in, that's, uh, that's NCN8 just out of Brecon. Um, that's going over the hill there and standard elevation graph there. Um, the, this is one of these things that seems like it should be really simple. Uh, and in reality, it isn't. And the particular thing that has taken years off my life is getting those two little numbers right there, up 1400, down 1200. Uh, you can spend absolutely hours from a sort of algorithm point of view trying to work out exactly how much climb there is due to uh, on a different route. Try it with different routing engines. You will find that um, they all give a different answer. But, you know, uh, I've spent a long time on this. I hope it's all right. Uh, and it generally seems to give me a decent answer. OK, so with that in mind, um, I think what we should do is actually try and use it. And I'm going to plan a tour. Now, this tour is one that, say, I took in September, and this was going from near Brecon, actually starting just outside Brecon, about there, and going up to real on the North Wales coast. So, Cycle Travel has found me a route, and it's quite a nice route, it's rideable, um, but I would like to go through a few places I've chosen. I'd like to do a few things that uh, I've wanted to do, see a few places. So I'm going to customize it and drag it around a bit. And I'm also going to plan my overnight accommodation with it. So let's have a go. We started there um, quite late in the afternoon. So I'm not going to go far on my first day. What I'm going to do is find somewhere to stay. So let's just have 10 miles or so. Let's see where we can stay near there. 
And if I click somewhere and click nearby accommodation, you can see a bunch of little icons have come up. So you can see there's one there in Glazebury. Glazebury is a lovely place. Uh, it's on the River Wye and um, there's pubs and things there for an evening meal. So we'll drag it to Glazebury. If I wanted to, I could go through and uh, book my accommodation right now. I'm not going to do that, but you, you can book accommodation through the site. And what we'll do is we're stopping there and we're going to make that an overnight stop. And what you'll then see is that in the elevation graph, it's calculated our um, distance and our time for today, uh, our ascent for today, so 250 metres climbing just for the first day. Um, and then after that, the mileage resets. So the five miles marker and the 10 miles marker you'll see there are based on how much cycling you're doing on the second day. So we'll carry on doing that. This is sending us up Long Las Cymru, um, Route 8, up through Bilth. Been that way before, I'd like to try something different. So I'm going to try dragging the route a bit to the east. Let's go through Newtown. And you'll see that it's sent the route that way. Bit of map reading, I think this looks like a nice valley. So I'm gonna drag that through that way. Bit more climbing perhaps, but that's taking us through to 100 House. We're on the Ravna Ring there, route 825, I think it is. And as you can see, we're getting through some reasonably hilly terrain and by mile 25 I figure I'm going to want some lunch. So could go to pub in Pennybont, maybe rural Mid Wales pubs can be a bit of a uh, mixed bag, you're never quite sure if that's going to be open or not. So I'm going to play it safe and go to Crossgates where there's cafe. So I'll just drag that in there and there we go. So we've gone through Crossgates and that means a bit of main road riding unfortunately but we're soon off and we're heading off this way. Now, as I'm going up this way, I can see that Abbey Coombe here is just along there. That's a um, site I've always wanted to go to. Um, so let's have a look at that. There's an old ruined priory, a bit like a uh, Llantony or um, Tintin or somewhere like that. So we'll go through there. It's then taking us up through um, Bulky Sarnow, um, where the Glendower's Way Cafe is. Unfortunately, not um, open on the day I went through, but nice. And it's taking us back to Newtown. Now, I'm feeling like being a bit more adventurous here. You can see it's taking us on for a bit of main road riding because there is seemingly no way through. Well, I reckon there might be. And what we're going to do here is we're going to dive off onto a bit of an off-road track. You can see that's marked just dotted. So it's um, probably going to be a bit rougher, but let's see, have we got any photos? That looks like it might, might be rideable. So we'll go that way. I'll tell you what it's going to be like later. Um, that takes us on little roads back into Newtown and we'll say that this is going to be an overnight stop as well. So, okay, stopping there. And frankly, after going over all those hills, I would need an easy start to the next day. So I'm going to drag it up to the Montgomery Canal towpath, up that way. And you can see it's highlighted it in green because it's unsurfaced, but it's still happy to go that way. So that's a good indicator that although it's unsurfaced, it's probably decent enough. And then that's taking us out on minor roads that way. Now, okay, fine, but uh, I've kind of got my heart um, set on doing one more big hill this holiday, and one more big hill has to be going over Bulky Gross, which is this way, the Pass of the Cross. So that means that we go on quiet roads from Lake Vernwy, then up the valley there, over the top, and just look at the elevation on that. That's, um, that's going to be tough, but um, it's an amazing ride, so why not put an overnight stop at Barla? And we can see, okay, last day there, it's saying that I've got 680 meters to go to Rill in terms of climbing. I could probably do with a bit of a rest after Bulky Gross. So what I shall do is have a bit, bit more valley cycling. So I'll drag it through Ruthin, that's going through Corwin as well. And we've got that down to 480, which seems decent. And that is more or less the route that I rode, to be honest. Um, it was a really nice ride. I did enjoy it. And I'll just give you a couple of holiday snaps if I can persuade the screen sharing to do it. Let's have a look. Okay. So this is um, just outside Brecon. This is uh, the first bit of riding. This is part of Route 8, Long Las Cymru, really lovely roads. Uh, Long Las Cymru is one of those routes that's uh, been well chosen all the way. And if you've not done it, it's definitely worth doing. Next day after Glazebury, uh, we went past this lovely station. We thought, yeah, this, this road seems uh, unusually flat and straight. Turns out the road's actually a converted old railway. Uh, and this is the sort of station cafe and art gallery at Earlwood halfway up. 
I dragged it onto a valley road you might remember because it looked nice. It really was. Uh, here's a random picnic site along the river halfway through. I'm getting into deepest mid Wales here. This is above 100 House, which is really lovely part of the country. And just look at the views. This is sort of cycling I really like. And that's my little sister who was riding with me and uh, was a stern critic of any wrong routing decisions I might have made. So that's and Abbey come here. Uh, that, that's the um, uh, that's the ruined uh, monastery priory. Um, getting up high onto the hills above Bulky Sinai. And this is a bit of on road that said I might try just before Newtown. Um, as you can see, Catherine's on her road bike or um, sort of road uh, stroke cross bike and uh, still found a bit of tarmac on this off road path as it were here. So, okay for now, at this point, we're definitely in hiker bike territory. I think I got back on at that point, Catherine was still pushing, but it, it's, you know, it's great scenery. Look at that, the um, wind farms and that sort of thing. So yeah, all, all lovely. Next day was a bit easier. That's going up Montgomery Canal towpath. Again, the Montgomery Canal is really lovely. I think they've just got 16 million pound grant to restore a bit more of it. So hopefully that's going to be getting a bit of TLC in the next few years. This was uh, this was a mistake of mine. Uh, I thought, oh yeah, that that hill looks lovely from the map. Yeah, it was it was lovely. It was also the best part of fifteen percent. Um, so it was yeah great scenery, but uh, on balance, I shouldn't have gone that way. But yeah, it was nice. This, on the other hand, was entirely worth it. This is the valley going up to Bulky Gross after um, uh, after Lake Vernwy. There we go, looking just back down it. Um, that's not the way that I'd come up uh, with Kigros, that's the other way, which just looks inhumane, but you know, look at the scenery, you, you can't, you can't buy views like that, it's gorgeous, and that's the way down, I always love this view, because it, it looks, it's like those uh, cinema adverts you see where they're trying to sell you an Audi by um, showing the amazing Alpine roads you can go through, and that's, that's one of the, that sort of road, uh, the balcony road type thing, not quite, I know, but you know, down the middle of a hillside, that, um, one of the few ones we have, really love that. Next day, a bit more gentle above Corwen, that is. Um, still wind farms. Beautiful town of Ruthin, stopped there for lunch. Rutland Castle, by now we're just cycling on along the estuary and it's nice and flat. Good bit of um, Sustrans path there, I think that's NCN 84. Into Rill, which is a um, brand new cycle bridge now, about um, 10 years old maybe, I suppose, one of the Connect 2 projects. And we finished by the seaside. Uh, and Rill is not exactly the um, bright lights and big city in a lot of ways, but it was, you know, it, it's nice to end up by the sea. Uh, and it was a terrific ride. So there you go. Um, the proof of the pudding and all of that, it was really enjoyable route and cycle travel did as well. Okay, so that is your whistle stop tour of, um, of the site. Um, just Couple of final things. If you want to save it on the site, you can set up an account and save, enter a name, do that. You can actually split it into a different route for each day if you want, now that we've uh, cut it into multiple days like that. Um, you can export it to your GPS. If you have uh, a Garmin, you can send it direct via the magic of Bluetooth and Garmin Connect um, onto your Garmin unit, or you can download a GPX track, which will open in pretty much any app or GPS unit you might have. What you can also do um, is save uh, save it as a PDF, which is a little file with a bunch of maps in or just a cue sheet if you want to. So it will do that. And that's um, all of this will get easier in the future when I finish that app. But until that day, you know, I've sort of tried to concentrate on making it easy to put the uh, routes into apps and into GPS units. The last thing that I'm going to show you on the site is the route guides. This is um, slightly different, but they're a useful resource as well. Uh, these are step-by-step -step guides to a lot of the um, more famous long distance routes around Britain and a few other places as well, a couple in France, Switzerland and so on. So we talked about one last coming earlier. We've got a route guide to it here. As you can see, that's got the map integrated into it. You can go straight there and download GPX. It's got a bit of information about what the route's like. A few pictures down there as well. And if we go to stage by stage guide there or there, then it goes through step by step, telling you what you'll see on each bit and with a few more pictures. There's also a little hotel finder as well. So you can look for campsites or hotels along the way and yeah, no shortage there. So we've got a bunch of those. And what you can also do uh, is go to this little thing where it says browse all the routes on a map. This is all those detailed route guides and a few outline ones as well. So we've got, um, even where we haven't got a full route guide, um, we've got something shorter. So what have we got there? Um, for short guide to one of the NCN routes. Uh, all of these, you can go and open the map and edit it up, uh, send, send it to your GPS or whatever. And we've got that for Eurovelo and national routes in France and a bunch in Germany as well. 
so that's good armchair reading if it's one of one of the evenings where you're dreaming about where you might go this year have a play with the route guides on here have a go with the explore function and see if any of these take your fancy certainly quite a lot of them do mine okay um i can see that i've gone on for longer than i intended i could also see those 22 questions so i'll stop there but uh, i hope you've enjoyed the tour and uh, look forward to um hearing what you might want to know and hopefully answering some of the questions. Thank you. Well, Richard, that was absolutely fantastic. I think on the chat, there's a mixture of people who knew about the website and are saying, I never knew that feature existed <laughs> to lots of people are saying, why did I not know about this website? So there's a lot of praise for all the, all the things that you've done and all the hard work that you've put into this. And I think you've, you've really contacted your fan base here. This is um, so, <laughs> um, which, which is, what we would hope with this cycle touring festival. So um, the, the, the number of features that are embedded in this in this website is just breathtaking. Um, and in particular, I'm sure everyone has their favorite, but in particular, I really like the suggest a ride feature. And the fact that you can do a suggest a ride via a pub is I think brilliant for those kind of sunny Saturday afternoons when you're not sure what to do. So as you said, there is um, lots of questions that's come through. Some of them, as I've been watching them, have actually been answered as part of your normal kind of narrative. So I'll try and skip over those, but we'll try and get through as many as we can. Um, so we'll start from the top. So um, Christo's saying, uh, do you have any plans to to uh, map Africa? And in, in brackets, hint, start from the south. So I think we can <laughs> yes. guess where, where he's uh, tuning in from today. Um, south Africa, actually. Yes, I do. Um, because, uh, okay, so the... The server that does a lot of the crunching through the data uh, uh, was kindly procured uh, for me by a friend who is South African and he did me a bit of a favour there and he said, in return for this, I want you to add South Africa to your website. So yes, South Africa is going to be there. I think it will be probably a bit of a while before um, it spreads over the rest of the continent. And that's mostly because I, I don't have the confidence to identify what's a good route and what isn't really. Uh, and so I, I'd be a bit wary about that. But um, yeah, I, I think we, we will be having South South Africa before too long. Great. Okay, another happy customer then. That's great. So um, Paul is saying, how does this differ from Kamut in terms of route selection? Is there kind of a, a tangible difference? Yeah, I, I'd say that the main the main difference is that cycle travel is um, much keener on quieter roads than Kamut is. Um, um, Commute, I mean, it's got various different profile options, um, but cycle travel, or at least the the aim is that it should do. A decent job of finding what the quietest roads are and part of that is because some of the data sources that cycle travel mixes in are ones which i don't think other um, websites are using so some of those data sources hopefully give it a more informed view of what is a quiet road and what is a um uh, what's a scenic road but i mean that said to be fair um there are you know there's 20 different route planning websites out there i would never pretend that this is the right answer for everyone so you know use use the one that you feel comfortable with uh and i you know i'm 100 relaxed if people say actually yeah, i prefer commute for some things yeah great use the one you like great okay i'll actually add my own little question to the back end of that actually i was wondering you talked about how how the different sections of routes have a score do you mm. create those scores yourself or do you pull them from OpenStreetMap or some external data? Um, yeah, so, so the raw data comes from OpenStreetMap uh, and that's, you know, what class of road it is, whether it's part of an NCN route, uh, that sort of thing. But then uh, I throw a bunch of extra stuff into there. Some of it is elevation, some is, is, is the scenic data and that sort of thing. So that enhances it. And then there's basically a really long program. It's, you know, uh, it, it's got to thousands of lines long now, uh, which weighs up all those different factors for a given bit of route and and says, okay, I'm going to give this a score of 15 or whatever it might be. Uh, and yeah, that, that's what it does for every single uh, segment of route. Okay. Um, this question here, I think you just covered this one, is the main differentiator between this platform and the popular well-funded ones the focus on smaller roads, I think you've... you've yeah, I, I think so. I mean, um, cycle travel is, you know, it focuses on quality of route rather than bells and whistles so much. Um, I'm, I'm a really big fan of Ride With GPS. I think Ride With GPS is a brilliant site, um, but their, their um, focus is very much on lots of route management tools, uh, chopping and um, uh, organising and folders and all that sort of thing. Cycle travel has less of that, um, but it really focuses on the quality of the route that it's going to give you. Okay. And uh, um, related to that is, um, how do you know if they're muddy or not? <laughs> <laughs> I go out and write them all. No. Um, so it's... <sighs> 
a lot of it is basically being a bit smart about how you uh, how you interpret the OpenStreetMap data. And just a good example of that is that there's something you can use in OpenStreetMap to score something on a scale of one to five as to how rough a track is. And so I use that. But it turns out that the mapping contributors in France actually tend to overstate stuff. And it's just France, and I haven't worked out why, but it really is. So in France, um, cycle travel is a bit more pessimistic about trusting what the mappers might say about a given road quality, because I've ridden so many tracks in France where I say, no, this is, this is not a two out of five. This is a four out of five at best. So there's a lot of, sort of little decisions like that. And so some of it is, you know, informed guesswork, I think you could say. So um, if it, if something is marked as a bridleway, then it will be more skeptical about it than if it's marked as a track, for example. Great, okay. Um, can you export routes into Strava? Yes, you can. Um, yeah. it, it does it via GPX. So you, what you'd have to do is take the GPX file and then load that into your Strava app on your phone. But yes, it can do that. Um, I'm I'm always interested in looking into integration with, with other sites. So um, you know it has an integration with uh, Garmin Connect in particular, uh, and you know if if Strava does that sort of thing, then I I can look into that if there's the demand for it. Certainly. Okay, a couple of ones about um, lots of people wondering how it how this is going to be expanded in the future. So um, some people asking if it's going to be an app, and I think you mentioned at the, at the beginning that you know that that is an idea you've had, but it's not implemented yet. Um, another person's asking whether mountain biking will ever be incorporated into it. But I, I guess mountain biking is difficult because sometimes you're going where there are no tracks or trails. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, well, I've still got my screen share open. So yeah, you uh, do. Uh, I have someone, someone asked about an app. So let me just um, bring this up briefly. Um, there we go. Just just to prove there is going to be one. This is uh, a, a screenshot of the independent app. Uh, and uh, Dave, it's it's Oxford, so it's uh, it's your oh, perfect. You're part of the world. Um, okay. And as you can see, it's still in development. It's not really a 999 kilometer route there. Um, but yeah, um, the, the app is coming on really well, and I'm hoping that will be um, uh, that will be ready before too long. Brilliant. Um... So we've done the map one. Lots of people asking. They ask questions which I think you subsequently answered. So things like, um, oh, but can you have height elevations? Can you change the the units of the height and the, yeah. of, the of the distances? Yeah. Um, so one of the things I didn't show is that uh, once you you can create an account in Cycle Travel, you just go to the little My Bike link at the top. In fact, um, let me bring that up again. If you yeah, if you go to My Bike at the top of the screen, um, and then uh you have a sort of profile page there and you can set that to be miles or kilometers or for people who um grew up in the uh, particular who were born in the 1970s like me and have the particularly british combination of miles and meters then you can have that one as well great um here's a good question so have you got any plans to cater for the needs of disabled cyclists oh that is an interesting one so yes and no uh not through cycle travel directly at the moment and i'm not I'm not 100% confident about the state of the data um, in terms of barriers and such like. Um, bar barriers are the big challenge, basically. And the it is quite hard to get consistent data about where barriers are and how good they are and how accessible they are. Completely separately, it's not really something I'm doing as part of cycle travel, but uh, I'm actually working on a project with um, Natural England and uh, a couple of other organisations which is looking at mapping barriers. So I hope that in a couple of years time we'll be in a better situation to be able to say, okay, yeah, we could have a route planner which um, is better for hand cycles, for example, um, which is able to tell you where the barriers are. But I don't think the data is quite there yet. Okay. Um, dum -dum -dum -dum. So here's one. Where oh, has it gone? Ah, oh, here's a nice one actually. So um, this, I feel this site is like a hidden gem. Would you like us all to spread the word on social media by sharing? Absolutely. This yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, and that that would be lovely um, because you know I think this is sort of going back to the uh, what I was saying earlier about it being one of me. Uh, uh, one of me does the coding and uh, does the uh, marketing and does the cartography and all of that sort of thing. Uh, and whereas you know some of the other uh, sites probably have a staff of ten people doing marketing alone. So yeah, that that would be lovely. Yes, please. Okay. Um, and related to that, what are the benefits of joining as a financial member? 
Okay. Um, uh, the benefits, st I still have a roof above my head, um, which is <laughs> yes. um, uh, and, uh, and that I can go out for a ride with my um, five-year-old. Um, so yeah, uh, it, I mean, it, it helps to pay for the running of the site. Uh, so there's the sort of uh, nice thing there. And, you know, it, it covers the cost of the service, which is uh, important. But you, you do get things in return. Um, the main thing that you get in return is you get a whole bunch of extra maps. So Ordnance Survey maps, French IGN maps, that sort of thing. And the Ordnance Survey maps do make a big difference. You know, they're, they're lovely maps. I, um, I've always been a big fan of OS Land Ranger and uh, um, the 125 Ks. They're uh, amazing maps. So yeah, you, you get those. The the French ones, the IGN maps are really nice as well. Uh, and there's a couple of other little baubles as well. Like there's a, a little weather forecast pop up you can have and things like that. Okay, so time just for a couple more. So here's a good one actually. Can it be used offline without the internet? Can you somehow save a route and then access it? Uh, not offline. Not as much. Um, you, if you've exported it from GPX uh, and then you can put that into right. an offline mapping app on your phone, you can. Uh, okay. And when I've done the map, uh, the app that will have offline uh, mapping as well. Great. Okay, so um, that that brings us to nine o'clock. So there's a few extra questions which aren't really questions, but they're just general praise. So one person suggesting that you deserve an MBE for all your efforts, and another person saying that <laughs> it's just fantastic and they love it. And I think if you if you um, take the time to scroll through the chat then you'll see that it's a kind of unanimous praise for everything you've done and all your hard work and oh, so thank you. for that i think you have a very kind of important contribution to the cycle touring community and um i i expect this app well it's not an app yet but um this uh, website is just going to grow and grow in popularity and for that we're all very grateful I hope so. I, I really enjoy it. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned uh, to you earlier, I think, Dave, um, one of the best feelings is just getting feedback from people and finding out that people have had good rides from it. I, I think I realised that it was going to take off somehow uh, when someone emailed me and said, um, I've, I've just planned a route from Shropshire to Rome with your website and I've written it. Uh, and it was great fun, although it did send me through one farmyard in France. And I thought, well, you know, <laughs> it, was, it was one farmyard in France and I can cope with that. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, uh, so, so I think that just leaves us a chance to say thank you to Richard um, and unfortunately because because we don't have video and audio for all the, all the participants if you could just kind of spam the chat now with all of your uh, praise Richard can kind of <laughs> or otherwise can, can see it can see it all in in real time about how happy everyone is for this and um, um, hopefully we'll uh, see you again at the Cycle Touring Festival and you'll get even more feedback um is there a final thought actually is there a way of people contacting you offline or after this event um, yeah. if they have specific questions is, is that via your website yep yeah. so the, there's a little forum on the website if you if you go to cycle travel and you scroll down then you will see um there's a link there for a forum and you can ask questions on that. Uh, there's also, I, I tend to uh, read the Cycling UK forum. Uh, there's a there's a thread about cycle travel on that, which is about 50 pages long. Uh, and so that that is a good place to ask questions. And I, I do sort of occasionally hang out on um, cycle chat or on some of the um, on bicycle touring subreddits and things like that. So if you use any of those, Cycling UK is a nice friendly forum or just use the um, cycle travel one and always very happy um, to get feedback and ideas fantastic so apologies to all the questions i didn't get around to doing but you now can contact richard directly yourselves if you absolutely want to find out more and see if i can answer some of them maybe by text yeah. so thank you okay all right and on that note we'll say good night and i hope you all enjoy the rest of your evening thank you bye-bye